All right, today uh, I'm gonna show you how to change the microwave because uh, this client, her microwave doesn't work anymore. Uh, very simple, all microwave uh, stove top hoods if you want, combination. Uh, they're all pretty much the same size, 30 inches. They might vary about a half an inch, but a half an inch smaller, half an inch bigger, doesn't matter. They're made for a 30 inch hole. Uh, the depth really doesn't matter. Some stick out a little bit more, some stick out a little bit less. They pretty much all fit in the same hole. So we'll start out by taking out the old microwave and then we'll install the new one that's in the box. So let's roll up our sleeves and get to it. Simple tools, drill, screwdriver, some good anchor uh, wall anchors, because whatever they stick in the box, I suggest never use because it's usually garbage. Uh, but that's, everybody uh, chooses their own thing. If you want to save the, the $10 and not get good wall anchors, that's up to you. So let's roll up our sleeves and start to get to work. We will start by unplugging the microwave, which this one's pretty easy. There's a wire right here. You just unplug it from the wall. Most of them are like that. No more power. Cool. All microwaves are installed with two big bolts from the top. That's what holds the microwave up. And then there's a bracket in the wall that's screwed to the wall, which you just hook the microwave. Very simple installation. You have to start by loosening up the screws on top. Usually it's a Phillips head. Phillips head. So Be careful not to take them out completely because the microwave could drop on you. So it's always good to get somebody to help you or something like that. Hold the microwave, take out the bolts and bring everything down. Oh, and it's a good idea to protect your stove top, especially if you have a glass stove top so put a blanket put a carpet put something just in case tool or screw falls you won't uh, shatter your glass if you have a, uh, a glass top or you won't chip the, the porcelain tops if you have a old-fashioned stove so this one here had three once you take out those three screws you'll see everything is just gonna drop and we'll be able to take out the microwave just fish the wire through the back so it doesn't rip any cabinets out. Now that we have the, the microwave out, we can take out the old bracket and then start by uh, opening up the new uh, microwave and looking at how to install the new one. Uh, they're pretty much all the same, but there's might be different uh, mounting holes and all that, so we'll see. So as you can see, bracket just comes out. Now we'll open up the new one and see the instructions. All 
As you can see, the new one has the bracket in the back. It's screwed onto it, and you see that it's not the same as the old one. Right here, this is the bracket. That you have, you have to remove it. You have to take your uh, two screws and remove the bracket, and that's what you have to screw to the seat, to the wall. Sorry. This is the bracket that you have to screw to the wall. That's what the new microwave is going to hook onto. Most companies they give you a template in the instruction manual so you can uh, figure out where to screw the bracket. And like you can see, this is what the back wall should look like and the brackets at the bottom. They show you how to install it, the distance from the top and from either side and where to put the screws. Easy way of doing this is just to put this straight to the wall and just mark your screw, your, your holes, and then just align everything, make sure everything's straight. So you just put the paper against the wall and make sure it's touching at all the edges. As you can see, I put it right against the cabinet and right to the top. And you keep it as flat as possible to the wall and then you mark your holes. As you can see over here, it doesn't touch the edge, but that's because there's a filler right here. So all you have to do is make sure that it's leaning, it's touching one side of the cabinet. Now you know where your, your screws are gonna go. You take your, uh, your little bracket, and I left it there. And you see if your screws match up. There's always a little bit of play that you can half half inch play, like quarter inch that way, quarter inch that way. So it doesn't have to be super precise, but just make sure that the holes that you mark fall in a hole of the bracket. And let's say you're screwing in and you hit a stud, you can't screw in more. You could always use the other hole beside. So you're not obliged to use that hole, but that's the suggested hole that they want you to put the screw in. It's always good when you have when you hit a stud but that's in a regular house where it's a wooden stud here it's a metal stud so if you put a screw into that it's not going to hold very much if you put the, one of the anchors that i'm going to install it holds up to 265 pounds so in theory two screws two anchors should hold this whole microwave no problem i usually overdo it and put an extra one so that i have no problems
these are the anchors that the, the company usually gives you which are your ordinary butterfly screws and anchors but the problem with these is that if you make a mistake and you have to take out the the screw the butterfly falls into the wall never to be seen again but once I install you can remove and install as many times as you want because they're fixed permanently into the wall so that's why I never use whatever the company gives you this is what I use all you have to do is twist it a little bit insert into the hole then flatten it out and this part comes to sit on the back of the sheep rock and then the front parts we squeeze right to the to the front part of the sheep rock so it holds there and since it's a flat edge instead of butterfly which it's only going to be two little tips against the sheep rock less likely for this to bubble out and crack your sheep rock or even yank, yank out of the wall. That's why they hold 265 pounds each. As you can see, this is how you insert it. In the hole, you make sure it's seated, seating properly. And then you <coughs> push the front part all the way to the, to the sheet rock and you snap the two little edges. And there you go, it's installed. Now that we know that our bar is level, we can make a small little hole. just big enough to insert the anchor. Now we make sure that it's flat. You know it's flat when these two edges are they're flush to each other. So now you know it's flush. There you go. There's your second anchor. Just with these two anchors, you should have more than enough. I usually put a third one in the middle just to be safe. I'd rather spend $4 on an anchor than $400 on a, on a new stove top or $400 on a new microwave because it fell. Oh, and very important when you put the anchors, make sure they're seated, seating properly against the sheep rock and not catching any wires or anything like that so try to feel around make sure that there's no wires because if you put it against a wire and then when you tighten it you cut a wire you'll have major problems you could get it a short circuit so just feel around you know that there's nothing blocking it it's not seeing properly <coughs> and like the other ones
always start off your bolt by hand so that you don't end up stripping it. And you know that they're started properly when you can go halfway and pull and if they're not coming out. Because if you put it against them, you put your drill, you might strip the threads or start threading it wrong and then you just you, you just spoiled your bolt and your anchor and you're gonna have to restart. Don't tighten them all the way. Uh, try to just put them so they touch the wall and then you can level off your uh, support. And once you know that it's perfectly straight, then you tighten it so that it's not gonna move anymore. Perfectly level. You can start with your with the one in the middle, and you see that it's. And you can set your drill to a, like a, like an eleven or twelve, so you know that it's you're not gonna over tighten it. So you know when you you hear your drill rattling like that, you're. not going to go anywhere that's going to hold the microwave and most of these microwaves they weigh maybe 40 pounds maybe not even that so those three bolts can hold up to like, over 700 pounds so I doubt it very much if that's going to go anywhere actually I'm sure it's not going to go anywhere all right, so that's for the support in the back. Now you have to check if the holes that are on the top of the cabinet match the holes that are on the top of the microwave. Usually there's another template. Sometimes it's on the same one, but this one doesn't seem to be on the same one, so they'll probably give another one. So you see there's three holes that were holding up the other microwave. I doubt it if they're in the same exact spot, so we're gonna have to look into that find the other templates and check it out. So as you can see, they show you where the holes go. Well, this one here takes three also. So you see, they look almost exactly in the same spot. If I'm lucky, save me some some work. company doesn't matter if it's not the exact same model if you buy the same company usually the holes will match up if you buy uh, let's say LG and that's a Frigidaire sometimes the holes match up but most of the time they don't this one is a Frigidaire and a Frigidaire so it saved me some time and some work and some headaches all right I forgot uh, we have to set the motor uh, this one doesn't seem to be set for it to blow up. This, this unit is supposed to be blowing straight up. Some, some houses will have it blowing out the back, but this one has to be blow out the top. We just have to take out these screws and adjust the fan. It's an easy procedure. You just have to take out all the screws and the screw on the side. And then all you have to do is lift up the blower, turn it 90 degrees, and 
drop it back in and now as you can see it's gonna blow straight up and out now you put back your, your all your screws once you have it facing upwards and you know it's gonna blow out There we go. Now that everything's set properly, we can uh, put the microwave on the, the on its support and screw it in. And you use the three provided bolts that screw it in from the top. When you come to put your microwave in, you have to tilt it a little bit forward so it hooks onto the your support. All right. Then you fish your wire through the hole and up into the cabinet. and you can leave your wire inside the cabinet for now. And then you start threading your bolts. All right, once you threaded your bolts a little bit, you know that it's holding. You can come with your drill and screw it in. Go slow at the beginning because you don't want to strip your threads. As you can see, just one bolt will hold up the hole. And you, you make sure that it's, it's clipped in properly all across the back. Once you see it's all clipped in, you can start screwing in all the other holes, all the other bolts. That's pretty much it. It's installed, it's secured. Across the back, it's all sitting properly on the support. All that's left to do is plug it in, make sure it works, and then just clean up. That's a good sign. Very good. So I can just put back the box around the, the exhaust fan and try and hide the, the cable as much as possible. There we go. And that's pretty much all that's left to do is install the two Two little filters for the, the exhaust. Okay, so uh, as you can see, it's very easy. Hope this video helps out with some questions you had or some uh, information that you were uh, that you were scared of, that you didn't know how to do or what it was complicated. Very easy thing to do. Two people can do it easily. Uh, if you found it informative if you like the video 
give it a thumbs up. Please give it a thumbs up. Helps me out on YouTube. If you didn't like the video, keep it to yourself. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Subscribe, please subscribe. And I'll see you on the next how-to video.